Joined now by TSN Hockey Analyst, former Vancouver Canuck, Mr. Frank Corrado. Frank, how we doing? Excellent. How you guys doing? Good. Yeah, very well. Digesting this news from Sweden where Elias Pettersson says there will be no contract extension this summer. He wants to wait and play the season and get off to a good start. You saw the clip. You heard his words. What do you make of it all, Frank? Well, welcome to the Thunderdome, boys. This is, uh, <laughs> you know, like this, this is what it's all about right here. So the first thing that would tell me is that he's feeling healthy, right? Like he feels healthy. And if that guy feels healthy, he feels very confident that he can be a top what? I don't know, top 10 player in the league, right? Like that's very attainable for him. So um, listen, I think it's great news if you're a Canucks fan because, you know, Elias Pettersson is, is a feeling healthy and B, he's going to come in here and think like, I'm ready to have a big season. So, you know, it's always interesting when a player has a contract looming, right? And if the season doesn't go very well, a lot of time the narrative is like, oh, want to be here really badly, really want to get this con. You're almost like over eager to get something done to, to kind of like say, okay, I'm secure, I'm safe here. But when you have a season like Pedersen had, and, you know, the ceiling that Pedersen has as a player, I think he looks at it and says, I'm not going to rush into anything. I'm going to wait and see how this plays out. Because if he gets off to a really good start and the season cards, you know, keeps rolling on that way, it's like, why does he have to settle for anything earlier on? So, listen, you know, you can look at it in a negative light if you're a fan and be like, wow, it's going to cost us a lot more money. Or you could look at it in a positive way and say, this guy's going to be a rock star again next year, you know, even more than he was last year. So um, it, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for sure. But uh, that's that was my main takeaway is that he's healthy and he's confident that he could have a big, big season. Frank, we've been talking about how Johnny Goudreau and Matthew Kachuk have really scarred the Canadian hockey fan, I think. And and that's not the case here because he's only headed towards restricted free agency next summer, not unrestricted free agency. But it's still a, a measure of control that he has in a year's time. Is that difference just too big for you to to be worried that Elias Pettersson would, would try to force his way out of Vancouver? I, I would say this, like not every Canadian city is built the same. Like we have to be on it. Like Vancouver's a little different, right? It, it's a very desirable place to live. The climate's a little different. Um, you know, those are things that, you know, maybe you, you have to take into account when, when we're talking about the, the players wanting to leave Canadian cities discussions. And that's, that's nothing against, you know, any of the cities that that's happened to. It's just, it's not for everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's a reality. I happen to love all, all those cities, Winnipeg, Calgary, Ottawa, they're all, you know, they all have their, their charm and uniqueness to them. Uh, but Vancouver is a very desirable place to live and, and, and be. Um, so I, I don't know if that like plays into things, but you know, as far as Pedersen goes, if things are going well for you on the ice, if things are going well for you in the city, I don't see why you need to start looking at it and saying, um, you know, maybe this is somewhere I don't want to be. I kind of looked at, you know, what he said and, and started thinking of, okay, what does the term look like? Because everyone, you know, who's, who's a high end player seems to want to give their team eight years. And I think that's the, the natural thought process of a hockey player is like, I just want to be locked in. I don't want to have to think about it. Cause you think about like being a player, you have so many different people that do things for you because all you want to do is play hockey. Right. So you got the financial guy, you, you check in every once in a while, but he's doing his thing. You got the agent, you check in every once in a while, but he's doing his thing. You got like, you know, now, guys, I didn't have this because I wasn't showtime. But like a lot of these guys have like the concierge guy that books them the travel and this and that. It's like, you know, but so what, I, what I'm trying to say is you just want to think about playing hockey and not worry about anything else. But we're almost entering into like this this new era where the salary cap is going to jump significantly and you can almost time things where you say, I'm going to take a shorter term deal. And if I stay healthy and I'm confident in my abilities, I can maximize my earning potential even more at the end of that. I, I think that's where I kind of my head goes with Pedersen rather than not wanting to commit to Vancouver, the city, long term. First of all, I'll be your concierge guy. I love me Expedia and Kayak. So it, you need uh, travel plans. I will be all over that. Secondly, <laughs> um, 
every con- every contract gets stale, right? Like remember when Alex Ovechkin signed his big deal back in the aughts, late aughts or whatever it was, and and we thought, oh my god, I can't believe you're devoting that much money to to, to one guy, and eventually. That, that ended up being kind of a valued contract by the end. Every contract gets stale. Like, yeah, yeah maybe you, maybe you sign for four or five years and then look for another big money payout then. Yeah. Listen, like Sidney Crosby's contract is another great example of it. Yeah. Like $8.7 million. Like he's outperformed it every yes. single year. And And I understand like there's something to be said about like, you know, the Boston model, if you want to call it that for lack of a better term, where, you know, certain players leave some money on the table so they can have a good team every single year. Tell you what, it's only worth it. If you win, (laughs) you know, if you don't (laughs) win, you left a lot of money on the table throughout your career. And you're like, man, I should have cashed in for that. You know, I'm having a a 12, you know, 12 year career. If you're, everything goes really well, that's a lot of money that you could leave on the table doing that kind of thing. Um, But listen, I, I think like, we've we've lived in this world now where the cap has been flat for so long and we've become so like sensitive to what people make so you know i'll give you an example like sebastian aho making 9.75 right now okay it's a certain percentage of the cap when the cap jumps up to 94 million it's at 83 and a half million when the cap jumps up to 94 million we're going to be looking at those numbers in such a different light we have to look at it as percentage of the cap and not AAV. And at some point, like, you know, if if you want to kind of take a risk right now on a shorter term deal, and then eventually take your chances on signing something later, your percentage of the cap is likely going to go up on that next one. So there's going to be more, you know, more for you to chew on that way. I think, listen, it's probably it's, it's against the grain. It's unconventional. You know, for what hockey players like to do, we just think of, okay, I'm going to get my long-term ticket. I'm going to lock it in. But we're just living Mm -hmm. in a world now where the cap's going to go up quite a bit in a short period of time. And I think agents and players are kind of recognizing that. And if you got the stones to do it, um, then, hey, you're you're free to do it. Well, and that was my follow-up, Frank. Uh, Whether or not you think this was percentage of the cap and get richer, especially if you have another season like you did last year, this coming season. Incidentally, it was... 9.5 9.5 million. Alex Ovechkin was making that in 08, 09. Yeah. 12 year deal, which are no longer allowed. Right. And they both felt so good about the deal. He resigned a six year extension at effectively the same freight. But Frank, take it, take it on. Do you think this is percentage of cap related? And they believe the longer they wait, the more money they're going to get. Um, well, listen, if, if he's debating whether like to take an eight year deal or take a shorter term deal, I absolutely think it would be percentage of the cap. I, I don't see any other, you know, deterrent really like, you know, ice time's always going to be there for him. I guess you could say like wants to know the direction of the team, but I think the direction of the team is pretty clear with the way things have gone. They haven't stripped things down to, to rebuild They're They're going to try and stay relevant and push for the playoffs. So I think, you know, uh, what the direction is at the end of the day for a player like Pedersen, he can have the patience to see how things play out. Um, and listen, I think when a player's as good as he is, the team is going to be okay with him being patient. I, I think a team can kind of put the, put the screws to you a little bit. If you're one of those guys, it's like, listen, we can move on and we can find you, right? They can't move on and find Elias Pedersen or it'd be extremely difficult to, So I think, you know what, he has understood that and he's got some leverage in the situation. And at some point here, like if he has another big year, I wouldn't be surprised if he looks at it and says, I know this league pretty well. I know how to play in it. I know how to get points. I know how to be a star player. Um, You know, let let me try and and, and do something that's a little bit against the grain. He may not. Like he may may just say, you know what, I don't even want to think about it. And and I'll play better that way. and, And all that stuff is great. But if, if he does choose to go that way, he's just going to take up a, you know, a more appropriate percentage of the cap as opposed to if he signs for, um, you know, X amount of, of AAV right now and eventually the cap goes up $10 million. Well, speaking of putting the screws, of course, taking the Canucks to arbitration next summer would be something that Vancouver absolutely wants to avoid as a team. Help me with this, Frank, because I have heard players since I began covering sports say, 
I wanted to get the contract done before the season so I can just focus on the year, get off to a good start, and, and not have to worry about it anymore. Elias just told us the exact opposite. He wants to get off to a good start, and so they're delaying the contract. How does that strike you as a former player? Well, I, I think you look at the arbitration at the end of you know at the end of the season, and he probably looks at it and says, "If I hold up my end of the bargain here this season, I'll probably have the better arbitration case, and the team won't want to go through that process with me." Back also, to back hundred point, back to back hundred point years, sort of thing. Yeah, right. I like, mean, those back sorts back of players never seasons. get to arbitration, right? Right. It, like it, those it, sorts exactly. of players almost it, never. Player like that, let's say he doesn't get to arbitration. Let's say they they get to the point where it's it's getting close. What possible argument is the team going to have against that player? Right, like you know, really, it, what you're trying to do is break the player down. I I don't know how you would do that to your number one center back to back hundred point seasons. Like I just don't see. Like I I think Pedersen's camp understands how much leverage they have, and in a way. You know, Matt, you mentioned that some players say, I want to have the contract done heading into the season because I don't want to think about it anymore. The same logic can be applied here. He's just basically saying, I don't want it done right now, but I'm also not going to think about it right now. Like, I'm just going to play the season here and then we'll worry about it, you know, at, at the finish line. So I think mentally from a player's point of view, I think he still puts himself in the same mindset in fact, now, like, instead of worrying about it all summer and having that maybe creep into your summer training, he's just completely put it off to the side and said, I'm just, I'm just playing hockey right now. Numbers are going to have to take care of themselves, yeah. you know, down the road. Cap, cap friendly and, and the others do put cap percentage on. I, I haven't heard a lot of people over a wide swath of years sort of use that as a target. And it's of course going to change. We hope uh, in the coming years, because we hope the cap changes. We hope the cap goes, goes up at least incrementally every year, but McKinnon and McDavid make 15% of their team's cap. What are we saying that Elias Pettersson's worth in year one of this new deal? Oh, 13, I, I would 12, think, 13. Yeah. Like I, I would think at least 12, 13 million or sorry, 12, 13% percent, of the percent, cap. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's kind of the benchmark is, is what are, what does McDavid get? What does McKinnon get? And you kind of work yourself down from there. The other thing, and I know you guys love when I bring Toronto, um, into the mix at, <laughs> at some point, people are going to want to see how much, you know, percentage of the cap does Austin Matthews take? Cause that's going to be very relevant. Right. Very um, clear. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, and Matthews is another one of those players, actually probably the only other player that looks at things right now and says it's probably going to be a three to five year deal and then i know the cap is going up so i'm going to want to eat up a little more of that percentage of the cap um you know and, and mike johnson has been talking about the matthews deal here in toronto basically all season long and you know there was a lot of talk like could he be the first player to eat up 20 percent of the cap Right, Ooh. if you were to sign an eight-year deal, I just don't know how you can win that way. I don't know how yeah. you can. I don't know how you can win with a player eating up twenty percent of the cap. So if you're looking at McKinnon, McDavid at fifteen percent, I think it's absolutely appropriate that uh, Elias Pettersson is is at least at least twelve, mm -hmm. thirteen percent of the cap in Vancouver. Three follow-ups here. Number one, you're right, Blake, that we don't often in fans and media talk about percentage of the cap as a thing, but it is very common amongst agents. Number two, Frank, you're absolutely right, and Mike Johnson is absolutely right. Now that we know Elias is waiting, the Austin Matthews extension does become a thing for the Canucks and for Elias. And then, you know, thirdly, you're also right in that he has got to evaluate how much meat he wants to leave on the bone for a supporting cast, as your ex-teammate Ryan Kessler once told us, right? We should all take a little less and make sure we keep this thing together so those become really big considerations now as this year moves forward it does and and you know what even in vancouver like correct me if i'm wrong you guys have been covering this team a long time the twins were making six million at one point and i think everyone basically had to just come in under that like kessler was four million bxo was four and those numbers see, seem so minuscule now mm -hmm. right? right but because the cap has gone up to where it is in, in 2023 and even though We've had a flat cap. It, it, those numbers still seem so so minuscule at the time. You're thinking, 
wow, six million dollars. That's that's a lot, right? But that's that's kind of where where we've been headed. And and in Vancouver, you know, when when the team was very good and winning Presidents trophies, players were okay with with taking less money. In Boston, they've done it. Um, in Tampa Bay, like I would always preface Tampa Bay as like they don't have to pay the the state tax, so that is a very real thing. So you have mm-hmm. to take that into consideration. But yeah, absolutely. If you just want to be all about your money and just, you know, make as much as you possibly can, chances are you're probably not leaving enough to be competitive. Right. So, um, you know, that's that's something that the player and the team both have to find a, a good balance for. Matthew, you, Matthew's at 13.9 currently. Currently, yeah. By the way, uh, just as McKinnon's for, 15.1, yeah. uh, I believe. Yeah. And uh, frankly, we used to call that the, the Detroit model, if you'll remember. Lidstrom got a certain amount, and everybody else was slotting in below Lidstrom, and and Gillis and company brought that over here to Vancouver with the Twins. Last question for me, my man. Um, there's a vacant captaincy here. Can you, and there's already speculation that he doesn't really want it because of the contract, but is there any world where Elias Pettersson can now be the Vancouver Canucks captain, knowing what we know about his contractual status and plans going forward? I'm sure he could be like, I, I don't think that's a deterrent really. I would just say like, is, is the player ready for it? And and does he want all that responsibility? There's a lot of microphones in your, in your face every day. There's a lot of answering to, to bad games. And um, you know, you have a, you know, a game that doesn't go your way. And then, you know, the mic- same microphones that were just in your face 12 hours ago after the game, they're right back in your face after practice in the morning. Um, so, you know, it, it is a lot. He's still a young player. He's a very talented young player. But this whole, like, contract thing, for me anyways, doesn't tell me that he shouldn't be the captain or doesn't want to be the captain. I just think this is part of business. Teams conduct their business how they think is appropriate, and we never really question when the team does it because they're the organization and it's just business. Well, now we're living in a little bit of a different world where – Players have a little more power, especially the ones that get 100 points in a season and are very good two-way players. So he's conducting his business. This is nothing personal. It's just business. And it's not even to that point. Like, it sounds more alarmist than it actually is, right? But I I don't think one has to do with the other. I think Elias Pettersson would make a great captain. Um, You know, and even, you know, I I know Quinn Hughes is is another name that, that could be a captain. Like, I think there's a couple... Um, very sound choices within the organization. Before, before we let you go, we usually start asking a poll question. Let's end it with the poll question. Yes. Imagine yourself as a Canucks fan. A fan. Would you be scared that Elias Pettersson wants to wants to leave? Zero percent. Okay. That would be zero zero percent. I think this it, is this I, is a negotiation, a business decision in your mind only. That's all yeah. I that's all I see it as. I don't see yeah. it as Elias Pettersson is is getting cold feet by Vancouver and the Canadian market. I see it as this is, you know, it's it's business, it's a contract. There's a lot of money up for grabs here at some point. We're going to play this thing right. I don't get any vibes of like, you know, not wanting to be in Vancouver. I really don't. Tackle all the hills with ease and don't arrive at work all sweaty. Get around the city on electric transportation that fits your lifestyle and get it at BestBuy.ca.